Well, hey guys, the time has come for us to revisit the world of collagen supplements for skin, hair, and nails. It's been a long time, and the other day I was doing a Whole Foods Shop With Me video. There were a ton of collagen supplements there, of course, and it got me thinking, I kind of need to revisit the literature on collagen supplementation for skin, hair, and nails. It's been some time. My last video was in January of 2019, and since that time, there have been quite a few new papers published, including a meta-analysis of the literature. So we're going to get into it in this video. Collagen is a protein. If you take your body, you pull out all the protein, about 25 to 30% of that is going to be collagen. Collagen is really important for our connective tissues like bone, ligament, cartilage, and of course your skin. Collagen consists of these three chains twisted together in a rope referred to as the triple helix. Collagen is a building block. It provides structural support. And of course, with age, we lose collagen throughout our body. So there's a lot of interest in taking collagen as a supplement. Collagen supplements are not actually collagen, but rather hydrolyzed collagen, basically digested and broken down into something that truly can be absorbed in the digestive tract and believe it or not, localized to the skin. Yes, this does happen. There are research papers showing that this happens. Hydrolyzed collagen in supplements is basically collagen that is obtained from animal sources like chicken, fish, pork, and it is hydrolyzed into peptides that can be absorbed in the digestive tract, go through the bloodstream and localize to the skin. There is a ton of interest amongst consumers for taking collagen supplements for improving the visible signs of skin aging, wrinkles, fine lines. If you weren't aware, collagen loss happens as a natural process of aging. And then of course, as a result of all of the things that we are exposed to on a day-to-day -day basis and our lifestyle habits influence our healthy collagen levels. When you go out in the sun, for example, certain enzymes in the skin get activated that chew up collagen. This also can happen as a result of exposure to environmental stressors and with age, uh, enzymes that chew up collagen also start to increase. Our ability to make new healthy collagen declines. You get a buildup of degraded collagen in the skin and all of these things culminate together in some of the visible signs of skin aging, like loss of elasticity, loss of elastic recoil, loss of volume, a decrease in epidermal thickness, and a decrease in the ability of the skin to retain water and moisture content. Now, as I mentioned, several studies actually show that when you digest hydrolyzed collagen, the collagen peptides, they can go through the digestive tract, get absorbed in the blood, localized to the skin. And studies suggest that there they can stimulate fibroblasts, which are the cells that make collagen, to do so, to make new healthy collagen. This also results in improved skin hydration and improved skin elasticity. The end result of all of this, of course, the goal is to have a smoothing out of wrinkles and fine lines. Now, it's not all about the cosmetic effects. People tend to focus on that as it relates to aging, but with loss of the supportive framework, our skin, which is our largest organ, the barrier to the outside world, it becomes more vulnerable to tearing, to infection, and is a lot slower to heal. So with our aging population, we have more people who are going to be elderly in the ensuing years to come. This actually has potential as an intervention for uh, people who, for example, may be hospitalized uh, and are older and more vulnerable to skin damage, skin infections, and poor wound healing as it relates to medically necessary procedures. Now, in my last video, which was in January of 2019, so four years ago, I do believe I mentioned that if new research came about, I would definitely update you. So here I am updating you. Since that time, we now have a systematic review and meta analysis looking at the effects of hydrolyzed collagen supplements on the signs of skin aging. This paper identified 19 double-blind randomized controlled trials of 1,119 individuals. After they identified all of these studies and took a close look at them, unfortunately, they are very heterogeneous, meaning they differ a lot in the approach that they took to evaluate hydrolyzed collagen. Makes it challenging to draw conclusions, but not completely irrelevant. They vary a lot in terms of the dosage of hydrolyzed collagen that they use. Studies range anywhere from using 372 milligrams a day, upwards to 12 grams a day of hydrolyzed collagen. They use different concentrations, different formulations, meaning the formulas have other ingredients that all vary. The studies differ in the sources of collagen too. Some use chicken, some use pork, some use uh, fish collagen, and they differ in collagen administration. Some of them look at liquid and some of them look at solid. 
Taking a step back though, the participants in most of the trials receive anywhere from two and a half to five grams of hydrolyzed collagen over the course of eight to 12 weeks. Despite the heterogeneity in how these different trials were done, the vast majority of them actually do show improvement in skin elasticity as well as a reduction in facial wrinkles. As far as expectations in terms of the timeline, beneficial effects of hydrolyzed collagen supplementation were seen at 60 days and 90 days into supplementation. And importantly, the beneficial effects were maintained 30 days after stopping. Like I said though, while improving skin elasticity and wrinkles may sound like a nice cause medic benefit, there are other advantages of this, specifically in elderly frail populations of hospitalized adults. And interestingly enough, this meta-analysis identified a study in which elderly frail individuals in the hospital who were given hydrolyzed collagen supplements, they did show an, a, a decrease in skin fragility and improvement in healing surrounding certain procedures. Like as I said at the beginning of the video, the aging population is increasing and increasing and increasing. And skin fragility becomes even more of a focus as we get into our wiser years. It's an organ system. It's an organ system, like all of our organs, there's wear and tear that accumulates with age. The older we get, the more that wear and tear is going to impact our overall health. And you can definitely see that firsthand in hospitalized uh, older adults, especially. And when they have skin fragility, not only do they not heal well, but they're more prone to skin infections, have significantly more adverse health outcomes in the hospital. And I have to emphasize, this is an organ system we're talking about. This is an organ system. Keep it functional as long as possible. So it's cool to think that perhaps this could be something that could help older frail individuals in the hospital later on down the road, but more research definitely is needed. But from a cosmetic perspective, this is also looking promising. You know, we have more studies than we did back in 2019 when I originally talked about this, showing improvement in skin elasticity and overall decrease in facial wrinkles. Woohoo! Well, don't get too excited. There are some limitations still to this day to the studies that we have that make them not necessarily generalizable and they leave some things that remain to be determined. Importantly, in these studies, there's no adverse effects reported. Overall, collagen supplements are pretty well tolerated, meaning if you choose to go down this, this uh, path, seems as though the adverse effects, side effects, are pretty low. In the studies, none were reported, but we do see people developing some adverse effects, namely around digestion, diarrhea, upset stomach, heartburn, and in some cases, people develop headaches. Now, if you have allergies, say, to fish, you need to be very careful uh, going down the path of collagen supplements because a lot of them are derived maybe from fish or pork, something you might be allergic to. So you have to really be careful in that case that you're not getting a collagen supplement that is derived from an animal that you are allergic to. It's also important to point out that we don't have any research looking at collagen supplements in pregnancy or in breastfeeding. So we don't know if collagen supplements are safe for women who are pregnant or breastfeeding. Now from this meta-analysis, something that um, was interesting, one study showed no improvement in skin hydration with collagen supplements, but this particular study actually looked at the underside of the arm, whereas most of the other studies are looking at areas like, say for example, the crow's feet where we typically get wrinkles. And this is interesting because the underside of the arm is relatively protected from uh, external factors that lead to extrinsic aging, like radiation and pollution. The underside of our arm gets a lot more protection. It doesn't see as much sun, and maybe the effects of collagen supplementation are going to be more dramatic, more noticeable, have a bigger effect in areas where you have a lot of sun damage or a lot of exposure as a whole to environmental stressors that contribute to extrinsic skin aging. There are still a lot of limitations though to the studies that we have. Most of them are using commercial preparations that unfortunately are not just hydrolyzed collagen. They have other things like vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, for example, coenzyme Q10 and or hyaluronic acid. All of these other ingredients in these supplements could be influencing the outcomes or maybe exhibiting synergy with the hydrolyzed collagen. The other thing that's very difficult to tease out or say for sure from the studies that we have is 
does the impact that we're seeing in terms of skin elasticity and improvement in wrinkles, is that really, does that really have anything to do with a true change in the collagen in the skin? Yes, we know that these peptides can make their way to the skin, but do we really have good proof that in human beings, the localization of these peptides to that part of the skin is actually meaningfully impacting the collagen. Yes, you, these people show improvement in wrinkles and improvement in uh, elasticity, but is that merely due to improvement in skin hydration? You see a lot of these studies, the majority of them, don't actually take skin biopsies. And for that reason, there's no uh, histologic evidence at this point really to robustly say that, it's, that these supplements are uh, leading to meaningful change change in the dermal architecture. It could merely be improvement in skin hydration. We see similar outcomes with some other dietary supplements, which I have a video on, and maybe I'll update that video. Uh, namely, oral hyaluronic acid supplements have been shown to improve skin hydration and smooth out wrinkles. Likewise, ceramide supplements have been shown to improve skin moisture content. So are all of these supplements really just really just improving skin hydration because maybe the subjects are just taking in more water as a result of taking supplements on a daily basis. Since the publication of the meta-analysis looking at all these different studies, there is a newer randomized control trial of hydrolyzed collagen supplements that actually looks at echogenicity of the deeper layers of the skin using um, imaging techniques and shows an improvement in dermal thickness. So that's promising that it is truly actually doing something, but again, more research is needed. And this was observed again, 90 days uh, into hydrolyzed collagen supplementation. So that's wrinkles, fine lines, skin elasticity, skin fragility. Do hydrolyzed collagen supplements do anything for our nails? So many collagen supplements will claim that they are helpful for your nails. Is there any truth to that? There actually has been one small study that looked at people, women specifically, who have objective signs of brittle nails and who report having brittle nails. The women's ages ranged anywhere from 26 to 50 years of age. So they took two and a half grams a day of porcine collagen peptides from a pig. After 12 weeks, they had a statistically significant increase in the nail growth rate compared to baseline. And importantly, that increased nail growth rate continued as they continued to take the uh, collagen supplement. They also had a self-reported improvement in brittle nails and they had a decrease in nail breakage. Not the most rigorously done study, but promising. More research is needed to say to what extent, if any, take collagen supplements are going to be beneficial for your nails. I see a lot of people sing the praises of collagen peptides and collagen supplements for hair growth. How does that make any sense though? Your hair is not made out of collagen, it's made out of keratin protein. Now maybe taking collagen peptides provides more amino acids in your diet for building healthy strong keratin. But really where the action of hair growth is happening is not from the strands per se, but down in the scalp. Uh, where you have the hair follicle and the hair follicle cells and all sorts of growth factors that come in and surrounding the follicle is collagen and that collagen supportive framework may influence and have an important role in the hair growth cycle. So it, it, it's interesting, it's an it's a interesting thought that taking collagen supplements, if they're able to improve scalp health, providing a more supportive framework around the follicle, allowing for better delivery of growth factors and things needed for healthy hair growth. It's merely theoretical at this point, however, we don't have uh, good research trials at all. We don't have any trials really looking at collagen supplementation for any particular hair loss disorder or for hair growth. Uh, there is one study looking at collagen a collagen supplement for people who deal with chronic telogen effluvium. Telogen effluvium is hair shedding, and it usually resolves once the stressful event that triggered it is addressed and goes away. But in some people, it goes on and on and on, and it becomes chronic for them. They chronically shed a lot of hair. And this study, it suggests that it might be worth looking into for people with chronic telogen effluvium, but it doesn't actually prove that it's truly helpful. So all that to say, more research is needed. We really don't have good studies looking at 
collagen supplements, collagen peptides for hair growth. Now, one question I get, you know, collagen supplements, the supplement industry, it's important to know, it's not regulated like uh, medications, meaning you don't necessarily know if you're getting meaningful doses of things. Um, they're not subject to the same level of scrutiny and regulation as like a medication. I always suggest if you're going to go with any kind of dietary supplement to always look for like third party certification. They basically help to verify that what the product is claiming on the label is actually what is in the product. Collagen supplements, there's a huge market for them. They can be pretty expensive. So I get a lot of questions. What about just taking gelatin? Uh, like if we just took gelatin, isn't that the same thing? Unfortunately, it's not. Gelatin is collagen, collagen that has been um, degraded. So you will get some absorption of, of peptides and amino acids from degraded collagen, but uh, it's not as bioavailable as the, as the hydrolyzed collagen peptides. The other thing that I see a lot is people are like, oh, just drink bone broth for collagen. There was a recent study that actually looked at the amount of collagen in, in bone broth, and it's actually pretty low. Uh, it's not what people are hyping it up to be. You're unlikely to get meaningful levels of uh, collagen peptide from bone broth. And by meaningful, I mean comparable to what has been used in these studies, suggesting improvement in wrinkles, wrinkles on the face and skin elasticity. You're not gonna get the, the, the dosages that they, they got to. Uh, and as a reminder, the doses range anywhere from 372 milligrams a day to 12 grams a day. So the, the amount of collagen peptide in bone broth pales in comparison to that. Not to say you can't drink bone broth if that's your thing, but don't think that it's gonna produce the same effect as these supplements appear to. That's, that's the thing, appear to. More research is needed, but I did need to update you guys as promised. There are more studies out there. Let me know in the comments, do you take collagen peptides? Um, if so, is it something that you have appreciated any skin, hair, or nail benefit? I don't. Like I said, I saw a bunch of collagen supplements and whole foods the other day, and I thought it would be timely to update my collagen video information. So I hope this was of use to you guys. Uh, if you enjoyed it, on the end slate, I'm going to put my video reviewing NMN, a supplement that touts itself for longevity. So definitely check that one out next if you missed it. But if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.